So we'll look at that. Um, then lastly, we will look at uh, a number of the uh, FANG stocks, um, which are in fact are really referred to now as MANG stocks, because of course, Facebook is now meta. So anyway, we'll look at those and we'll also look at uh, Tesla for good measure. So that's the uh, game plan here. Um, before I go on, of course, the ubiquitous uh, disclaimer that goes along with any of these presentations, uh, Precision Trading Labs, we are um, a service provider uh, to our subscribers and we provide uh, market information and, uh, and education uh, for both, uh, you know, again, informational and educational services. So we are not um, purposes. We are not uh, broker dealers. We are not uh, fiduciaries. We are not financial advisors. Okay. So there's the uh, disclaimer. So let's take a look at the uh, market action uh, for the uh, concluding uh, week here. So here's the, uh, the week that this concluded. This is a percent change chart that's based on the close of last week. So today is the ninth here. So uh, our zero point here is the close of last Friday. So this is where the percent change is uh, computed from. And so that, that's that line right there. So that's our reference date. And you can see right there, that's uh, June 2nd, okay? So that's our reference date. So you can see right here, uh, the SPY um, and the, uh, the Qs uh, were pretty, uh, you know, relatively flat. The SPY, the SPY was up about a half a percent. The Qs were virtually flat. Um, and the Russell 2000 did uh, have a pop of about a percent and a half. Okay? And then also the, uh, the bond market, as, um, as depicted by the uh, TLT ETF, which are the 20-year, uh, the longer-term bonds, 20-year and up, uh, that was pretty much flat as well. So in a sense, it's, like I said, a rel relatively calm week in the big picture. Uh, like I said, though, the big deal was is that we more or less were in, at least a, a, on a technical basis, uh, kind of the first week of a bull market. So we'll see, of course, uh, where that uh, where that goes. Okay. Uh, again, I kind of showed you that there, there was that um, that that move. Okay. And again, we have we still have about a seven and a half percent to go on that. Um, if we look at the intra-week sector performance here, and we break it down uh, by these uh, major industries here, uh, we can see retail. Uh, and that's actually, uh, you know, kind of a, a recovery because retail has actually been pretty miserable uh, for the last few months as there have been uh, inflationary concerns um, and, uh, you know, concerns about, of course, you know, high interest rates. Um, and so consumer confidence has generally been pretty low. Uh, but that kind of revived this week. Uh, and it's interesting because if you look right here, we can see, and this this kind of shows that maybe there's some, um, you know, maybe there's some um, some some oomph coming it back into the market here, uh, where which might just take it higher, is that the fact that we now have both retail and consumer discretionary, uh, were both the strong the strong players this week, and of course the discretionary and retail uh, they kind of go hand in hand, so that 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 could and of course discretionary as diff differs from the consumer staples. We noticed that the consumer staples were kind of weak this week. Uh, they, you know, and of course, you know, weak in a relative sense. Uh, you know, it was only down about 0.7 percent, so less than one percent. And then actually, tech, which was pretty much the big star uh, for the last few uh, last few months, or at least last, you know, let's say last quarter or so, that was also weak. Okay, so then, we, and then of course, we had health and communications. Okay, so retail and consumer discretionary were the strong, uh, strong players this week. And then all the rest, of course, were in the middle here. And those were all pretty much anywhere up from 2% on the utilities and materials were up about a half percent. So you can see these were all pretty much clustered in here. And then, of course, right in here, there's the SPY. And the SPY, again, as I showed in the uh, prior, um, the prior slide, uh, the, you know, was, was pretty close to flat. Okay, so that was the deal with the sectors uh, for the last, uh, last trading week. Uh, if we now go to and look at, look at that for the rolling month, again, here's our percent change chart. Uh, this goes back to um, May 5th, okay? So we're looking for the period now on a percent change basis from the week that started May 8th uh, and that rolled through and that goes through this week. So this week, of course, started on the 5th and ended today on the 9th. 
And so that's what we're measuring here on a percent change basis. And again, of course, our, rep our uh, reference date, uh, since we're st we started on the five weeks ago on the week of the 8th, uh, our reference date, of course, is the prior Friday, which would be the 5th. So that's where, that's where we're measuring from here. Okay. So if we, um, if we now look at this uh, on a rolling month basis, we can see uh, even though uh, tech was, you know, tech was weak this week, as I said, though, uh, overall, it, it has been, you know, more or less the star. Um, but then the, some catch up got, uh, got uh, created uh, in the last uh, two or three weeks or so. And so now we can see uh, where tech was pretty much head and shoulders about everything above everything else. Now you can see it's been joined by consumer discretionary and communications. And of course, communications has a huge tech a component to it. So in a sense, again, these kind of go hand in hand. So we're not necessarily all that shocked uh, to see uh, to see that joining uh, the tech sector. Okay, uh, On the bottom here, um, we have consumer staples and utilities. That's kind of noteworthy because if we think about how sector rotation works and what, what sectors tend to be strong and weak at various points in the, in the economic cycle, uh, generally, these are indicative of a contracting economy when you're when you're sitting when they're sitting up here. Consequently, the fact that they're sitting down here uh, over the course of the last month shows that you know there is some um, there is some optimism that's in the market. Now, whether that's whether that's uh, deserved or not, that's that's an open question. But in terms of what the classic uh, you know interpretation of how the sec of sector performance is, um, that, that again is indicative of that. And similarly, when consumer discretionary is up here, that's again reflective of, you know, again, optimism. Uh, consumer staples, of course, are things like, uh, you know, people buying, uh, you know, toilet paper and paper towels and toothpaste and food. Uh, consumer discretionary, of course, are, you know, gadgets and stereos and cars and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, Again, that tends to be reflective of some optimism. So we'll see where that goes. But again, uh, these are the uh, the strong sectors. These are the relatively weak sectors, and the ones that are sitting in this white box here. These are what, what we refer to as kind of the between sectors. So um, what we typically do, particularly when it comes to the rolling month performance here, is more often than not we are looking to trade. Uh, the strong stocks in the strong sectors. And then of course, taking one of two approaches. More often than not, we're using our supply and demand uh, concept of looking for pullbacks into demand zones in order to then put on bullish trades. Um, and then similarly, when we, if we're looking uh, in terms of wh wh where the weakness is, we then look to trade and, and, and put on bearish trades based on the weak stocks in the weak sectors. Uh, and again, at that point, then we look, we are looking for supply zones, which I will show you in the next, uh, when I go to the live charts here, uh, where we're looking for rallies up into supply zones, uh, which are areas where we expect that there is going to be downward price pressure in the future. Uh, we will look for rallies up into those zones in order to put on uh, bearish trades. And so that's, that's, that's kind of our approach. And that's why it's kind of useful to, um, to look at this, this, this sector analysis and then use that as the basis to create um, in a sense to create an analytic bias uh, from a technical analysis point uh, perspective uh, for certain sectors and then look for the, the strong stock strong stocks in these strong sectors and similarly the weak ones in these weak sectors so that's the uh, that's the deal with that so uh, let's take a look at the live charts here and we'll kind of see some of this in action here so here's the, uh, the chart that we were looking at before. So again, this is a supply zone. Um, and again, what, what this is, is that this is an area of, of, again, we anticipate when price came back to here, we would then see um, price get stopped by it and potentially get pushed back down. So, so far it's gotten, it's gotten stopped by, it's gotten stopped here, but it hasn't actually gotten pushed down yet. Okay, so we will, we will see what happens here. Um, and if we actually look at this um, in terms of the distance of where, uh, where, where price is sitting right now, we can see right now this is kind of sitting in that zone that we were just talking about here.
Okay, uh, I've actually broken this down now from we've gone from a, a, a daily chart down to a two hour chart in order to sort of highlight uh, some of the detail, more detail here. So if we look here uh, and I blow this up a bit, uh, these are two what are referred to as demand zones. This is where price came up, consolidated and then popped. Now notice that 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 large gap there and then that very bullish candle. Again, this right here, and I'm a little sus, I'm a little suspicious about this zone because this is really the relief pop created by the uh, the debt deal. Um, so I'm a little I'm a little wary of this because of the fact that this is such a news driven um, uh, demand zone here. Okay, and again, again, what happens here in the demand zone is that you have a little period of consolidation. Price went sideways, and then obviously a change of perception occurred the next day, and then po price popped from here. Um, right here, that you can characterize this as an exhaustion of sellers. All the sellers disappeared from here, okay? And there was a gap and then a go. Um, so again, I'll, we'll keep an eye on this. So this is about a little less than 2% down from where price closed to end the week here. Again, I'm a little suspicious of this. On the other hand, if price comes into this region and shows signs of reversing uh, and actually comes out of the comes out of the top line, takes out the uh, the um, the front line of this demand zone, then in fact uh, we, we will go we will go along with that. But if I had to take a guess, it's quite possible. I wouldn't be necessarily shocked that if we did get a pullback here, um, price would actually descend to this region here um, and this 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 demand zone under here. Notice price came down, consolidated, and then and then fired up with a very bullish candle here. So this is another demand zone right here. And some some people we we refer to this as a level on a level here because we have a level here. This 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 like I said, I'm a little I'm a little wary of this uh, this region here. But this demand zone right here, which is about two and a half percent down, this is where if we got a pullback, I would expect to catch a bounce. And so I would probably be looking down here for that. Having said that, you know, we could end up, you know, kind of popping through uh, this because we're sitting right at the top of this prior supplies, supply zone that got created here. So we'll, 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 we'll wait to see what we uh, what we find there. Uh, the next potential area of, of supply is kind of up here at this double top. Now, having said that, um, I've, you notice I've had this in pink here. I'm, I'm, I'm very suspicious of this because essentially this was an area of supply. This is this tested that supply zone, and quite often uh, you, when you have a zone like that, uh, the first test is best. So when it comes back on a retest, which would be if it came, if it came back here again, it's quite possible that if it gets up to here again, uh, the supply might be chewed up here. So there's really no clean supply here because again up here there's a, this is another area uh, where we can kind of think of this as resistance but it's really not clean supply. So I'm not really in love with anything that I would be looking to short, okay? So again, um, if, if price kind of runs here, at that point then I would probably be looking for some kind of breakout trade rather than looking for a pullback, for looking for a rally into a supply zone, okay? So, but again, the, uh, on, on the downside, if, we, if this thing does roll over, uh, we've got a couple of uh, nearby demand zones right below. Again, with the caveat that I might be more into the blue level below than the yellow than the yellow level above that. We'll see what happens there. Uh, after that, if if for some reason you did you get a major pullback, well then 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 there's an area down here. And even though we talked about um, the first test being best, and we've actually had two, we've had a test and a retest of this of this demand zone here. Both times, price just really kissed this level and and then popped to me, you know, and then popped from there. Uh, it really didn't go into this level and not at all. So if it comes back here again, this level actually might work again. But again, that's just you know that's six percent down from where we are now. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. So that's the deal with the uh, spy. If we turn to the queues. So here's where we closed uh, today. We closed at about 354 and a half, okay? Um, and if we go back um, in time 
and we go back to this region right here. This was an area that got created in, um, and this was a supply zone that got created here in April of uh, of this of, of last year. Okay, so you know we were we 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 had taken out the 52 week high, and then price had continued to move from there, and so right now uh, price came up into there, uh, and this is what we were looking at last week. Here's June 2nd. Okay, so right as we as I as the week closed last week. Um, price had gone into this the week a few days before, and then kind of went back into here. And now again, we're still stuck in this area. So this area kind of has done two things. One of two things: it is it is price has gone into it, it has rejected it in a very minor fashion a couple of times, and now it's here again. Um, it's quite possible that now that it's been back here again, it's really has chewed up most of the supply here. So again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be racing at this point to short out of this supply zone. So where we are now, though, is we're about two a little over two percent away from the next clean supply zone. Okay, and if we go back here, here's the one that got created the first time, and now here, notice price rallied up here. Notice, okay, there is this uh, c consolidation area right up here, and then price kind of drops out of there suddenly. Okay, so right there. This is, an, this is an area of supply and probably in a sense, this is probably really the, the more accurate uh, supply zone right here where, where, where essentially it kind of rolled, where price rolled over uh, right from this area over here. Rally, a base, and then a drop there. Okay, so that would be the area that I would probably expect uh, really to see uh, a potential price rollover. Okay, so if we then go back to where we are today, and if I pull this up to really where this this level should have been, that would be about three and a half percent up. So in fact, if price pushes through here, and that's that fifty right here, that's that's the fifty-two week high. That's a new fifty-two week high that got created here. Um, that's that's right here at three fifty-seven. We can see that from, from 357 to 366, there is really no clean supply in between. So if, we, if this thing starts to move, it's quite possible that one could play a breakout in here. And uh, there's really not going to be a whole lot to stop this until, this, until we get that 3.5% move uh, up to here. And that would obviously, obviously give, us a, give, give somebody a nice ride um, in terms of, you know, if you, if you saw, uh, what is that, uh, 7 um, what, is, what do we got here? 12 points on the queues here, uh, particularly if one used uh, used options uh, or bought a call on the queues, um, that, that would actually give you a nice uh, nice trade there. So we would be looking for price to kind of bre break through the top of this supply zone, perhaps take it out by, uh, you know, let's say a point. And let's say if that's 357, perhaps maybe get in around 359. And then you could ride that up to about 366, 367. So you'd have about an eight point ride or so. So that's the story with the queues. Uh, if we take a look at Apple, um, we can see Apple uh, earlier this week, again, there's those uh, that, that jagged blue, uh, that's a new 52 week high, okay? So right now we're sitting, and right now that actually was sitting right here. Actually, this is this this actually created a new uh, supply zone. In fact, right there. Okay, so if price comes back here, uh, we can see price rallied, consolidated, dropped with a great deal of energy with that very bearish candle. So if price actually pushes up, and of course that's right right above here, you know, less than a percent above, um, it's quite possible you might then see another. You might see price get pushed back here. So I wouldn't be looking for uh, Apple to break through this, at least without, you know, this 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 level putting up a fight here. Um, so we'll see what happens when it gets up here. But it's quite possible it could roll over, you know, from here. Now, is it going to roll over, you know, with a, you know, a great, you know, a great distance? No, probably not. Uh, but if it did roll over and it started to move, uh, the logical place uh, for that for that move to uh, occur to would probably be something uh, on the in the territory of right here. Okay, this is a little local area of demand that got created. Okay, and so if we look to see um, where that is, okay, 
Okay. That's at around 179.50. Okay. So we're sitting at 181.05. So 179.50, of course, is about two and a half points uh, down on that. So that that's so again, if price would roll over here, you know, you could see it going from let's say 182. And then again, that would probably be about a three point drop to here. So, you know, not a huge move. But um, again, that's but I we'll we'll see what happens with that. So that's that's a little local area of demand right there. Okay. And then after that, uh, really the sort of the quality area of demand uh, is really there, though, the origin of this gap. And if we just spread this out a little here, I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, we'll just leave that there. So here's where we are now. Okay. If we run that line down from here, and let me just get this extra extra data out of there. Okay. We can see that this damp, this demand zone here, where you had a rally, a base, and a rally here, that's about 3% down from current price. Okay. After that, there's really no clean demand. Um, which, of course, again, as I explained earlier, when I talked about the supply zone, a demand area is just right here. There's a drop, a base, and a rally here. Okay, this is an area of consolidation. Okay, right here, there was an exhaustion of willing sellers. And essentially what happened was that the buyers, the bids, had to effectively run up the price chart until they found willing sellers, effectively asks or offers, in order for these trades to occur. So when price, if price would actually come back to here, uh, we would expect that this is an area of future upward price pressure from here. Uh, but like I said, right here, that's the that's really kind of the near clean one here, about three percent down. Okay, if it breaks through here, this is kind of just sort of a chop fest and a mess, and price would probably get slowed up in here, but ultimately it would probably end up dropping through here. So in fact, if it actually kind of got stuck in here and then actually started to poke through on the downside, uh, this might actually be the basis for some kind of breakout play if it would actually kind of break through uh, this region right here, okay? And then we, we would be looking for a breakdown to the, um, to, to the downside over here. So again, this is the area that we expect to, to hold price up and send it back up. But if it doesn't, and it kind of gets down through here, then really the next clean, clean areas of demand are right here on Apple. So that's about, that's about 8% down. Uh, if we go to Amazon, okay, here again, we are, we are at current price here. Um, if we go back in time right here, So if we go back in time, and uh, here, here's where we are now, and if we go back in time a bit, we will see right around here, um, notice price dropped from here, consolidated, and then dropped from here again. And if we, uh, if I actually bring this down to a, a bring this up to a daily chart, okay, and then we take another look at it, you'll see it in a much cleaner fashion. We've got this zone right here, drop a base and a drop there. Okay, then there's a small pause and then another thump down here. So you, you kind of have a price swing that goes from here, from right here, consolidates and then thumps and then there's a thump down from there to there. Okay, so that's an area of, uh, of supply here. So when price comes back, which it has now, uh, you can see price came back here. Um, it has been sort of, in, in a sense, an initial rejection, but it hasn't really reacted um, really in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a great fashion yet. And it's quite possible it might not. Um, so right now, if we're looking to see, you know, where are we in relation to uh, some of the quality zones that are now on the chart, um, right here, this is the area that we just described that's kind of, you know, in a sense, being tested now. Uh, and then after that, there's really no clean supply uh, for then a, a fairly long distance up, because right here, this is an, this is this little area of kind of local resistance. There's really no clean demand there, and then right, excuse me, clean supply, and right there, there is there is the area of supply. Price came up here, consolidated. Notice those two very bearish candles there, 
Uh, and so this is an area of anticipated downward price pressure if price returns uh, to this region. Okay, but again, that's a long way up. Okay, so um, and in terms of if, let's say if, if if Apple, excuse me, if Amazon does roll over though, um, right here, and let me spread this out a little so we can see the numbers a little clearer. So right here, this this region from where we are at current price here, uh, this is about five percent down. This little area right here is about nine percent down. And then this one, uh, you know, much much further down. This is about uh, this is about fourteen percent down here. So that's that's a long way down. Okay, but this, particularly in this one, this is sort of the near term uh, quality demand zone. That if we get if price does roll over from here, uh, we would be looking to take some kind of bullish trade um, on Amazon out out of this out of this region. And of course, we could either buy the stock outright or express the trade through some kind of uh, bullish options position either buying a call, doing a bear call uh, verticals, or maybe doing a bear call vertical spread, or de depending on the state of implied volatility, one could also do a, um, I'm sorry, actually, I should have said a bull bull call vertical spread, I think, I may have said bear call. And then on the, um, if, and then depending on the state of implied volatility, one could also do a bull put credit spread. Uh, where one would actually then sell a uh, put, let's say, right um, uh, immediately below this demand zone, and then, of course, buy a put to offset that uh, underneath, and that defines the risk. And so that would be another way of expressing uh, a bullish trade out of this demand zone. Okay, so that's Amazon. If you take a look at Google. Um, so here's the here's our close uh, of Google today. Um, if we go back. And you can also see right here, it made a new 52 week high uh, today before um, before essentially giving it all, you know, giving a, a lot of it back. Um, and if we go back here in time, we can see right here, uh, this is an area right here where there was uh, some supply right here. So price came back into this. Uh, it's again, kind of got rejected out of here after sort of, you know, flirting with it and testing it. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, but again, the market, you know, is, is showing some some signs of life. So it, this, it's quite possible this level might not hold. Uh, if it does reverse and turn up, then the next areas of supply, uh, there's an area right here where we had a drop, a base and a drop there. Um, and in fact, if you notice right here, we have that that um, that doji candle here, uh, that spinning top in there. And again, and if we took this and brought this back to a, a two hour zone, we'll be able to see the um, consolidation, I think a little clearer, if we now go back. So now we're now back to the two hour zone. And if we go back in time here, we will see right. Right there. And we can see right there price um, more or less consolidated right here with these uh, these indecisive candles and then notice then then price kind of drops from here <clears throat> with this series of, uh, of red candles there okay so there's that uh, area of supply above uh, for Google and uh, in terms of the distance uh, that's about uh, nine that's about uh, let's see where are we about about 10 percent uh, higher okay and then on the demand side uh, we have some some levels that are very close uh, down below here Okay, so right here, an area of demand that's only about 2% down here. And then there's an area of demand right here, and that's about 4%. So we have some nearby trading levels for Google there. Uh, if we go to Facebook uh, Meta, okay, here's our close. There's our, there's our 52 week high right there. Um, we have a, a quality demand zone right here. Uh, that's about a little less than 4% down. So that would be an area where we could express a, a bullish trade, okay? And then the next uh, next clean area of demand that we like is then actually much further down. Um, and then and, and that would be down here. Uh, and that's about 11% of the way. Uh, we're looking at a two hour chart here. This actually cleans up uh, much better in, a, in the daily time frame. If we uh, consolidate that, we can see right there and in fact, it's quite possible that, that fact this actually may be, in fact, a uh, in fact this might actually even be a, a weekly demand zone. So. 
And if we notice, we go to the weekly chart here, we can see very clearly, okay, price came down, then notice that, 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 um, that consolidation there, and then notice the way price really rockets out of there. So this is really practically a, a weekly uh, demand zone. So that, that tends to be an institutional level. So that actually is uh, oftentimes a, can be a good trade. But having said that, one would have to be patient for that. And of course, you know, theoretically, it might never get that. It might never get back there. But anyway, that's 11% down from where, where we are. Uh, if we go to Netflix, okay. So here's where we are in terms of our close. Uh, right above here, um, there was an area of supply that got created. And this was actually something in the uh, in the two hour chart here. And if we go back and take a look at that, notice price came down, consolidated. Notice then that very very bearish uh, drop out of there. You know, there was a quick return to that area, but then eventually it you know price dropped from there. So this is an area that we we. If when price gets back there, we would look be looking to see if in fact there is some uh, some pushback against this level. Um, not the great, not the greatest of, of supply zones there. Um, so we'll be we'll, we'll be looking at that. Um, on the on the other hand, if we did get a uh, if price did roll over and let's just say there was some profit taking uh, after this kind of healthy move up, uh, this would be an area where we could be looking to buy at around three ninety three. Okay. That area is about a little, about 6% down from where we are now. And lastly, if we take a look at Tesla. So on Tesla, we can see that we are actually in the midst of a supply zone that got created uh, that was sitting above here. Um, I got that marked as a daily. So if we bring that back to the daily chart, we can see price kind of gapped up and stuck in there for today. Okay, right here, price dropped, okay, rolled over. Um, so we, we, we'll, we'll be waiting to see uh, what, how this reacts. Right now, it's, it, it's, it's up here. It's stuck, stuck there. You know, in a vacuum, we would expect to see this thing drop from here. We'll obviously, we'll see what happens on Monday. Uh, we got, you know, a lot, a lot can happen in uh, over 60 hours or so. So we'll see what happens on Monday here. Um, in terms of demand, uh, there really isn't any clean demand until we get down here. And that's obviously a long, long way down. So that's 23%. So uh, on the, in the short term, really not looking for any grand opportunities uh, in Tesla, just because of the distances involved, as well as the uncertainty of the, of the supply zone that's in there. So we'll see what happens. At any rate, um, that's, the, uh, that's the market summary. So anyway, I hope you found it interesting and helpful. Uh, if you did, uh, please, um, please give us a like on our uh, YouTube channel, please subscribe to it. And also if you click on the uh, schedule a call link, um, I or my uh, partner, Ryan O'Sara, uh, we would be delighted to talk to you about uh, Precision Trading Labs, uh, what we do with our subscribers, uh, also review, uh, review a couple of the symbols that you might be looking at. So uh, anyway, uh, so definitely click on that and uh, we'd be delighted to talk to you. So. Thank you very much for the privilege of your time. This is Mitch Firestone, and I will see you, everybody, next week. Take care. Bye-bye.